Hello, everyone. I'm Di Xintang, postdoc at UC Berkeley. I will present our research, Resource Efficient Share Query Execution, via exploiting time slackness. Scheduled queries over a stream of tuples are prevalent in today's database applications, such as maintaining dashboard reports for daily loaded data and regular ETL jobs. In many cases, scheduled queries are querying the same set of data, like analyzing the past 24 hours data at 6 a.m. But they have different, different deadlines, like QA needs to generate the report at 7 a.m., but QB's deadline is at a later time. Previous research shows that shared query execution can reduce civic consumption by eliminating the redundant work across common sub-expressions, but we find this is not always the case. For scheduled queries, shared query, shared query execution can even increase the CPU consumption because the shared plan needs to be executed eagerly to meet the earliest deadlines. Therefore, we consider judiciously sharing queries to reduce CPU consumption while not missing the deadlines. This is particularly useful in today's paper use model where we can reduce users' monetary cost while providing the same quality of query service. Now, let me explain why shared query execution can increase the CPU consumption. We represent the deadline of query as the latency goal, which is defined as the max allowed time between when all data arrives and when the query result is returned to users. One way to reduce the query latency and meet the latency goal is to use incremental execution, where we start the query early and incrementally incorporate new data into prior results. We can execute this query more eagerly to further reduce the query latency, which means we will start every execution for a smaller amount of data. However, eager incremental execution can increase the total work or CPU consumption, although it decreases the query latency, because incremental execution can remove prior output tuples and introduce wasted work. For example, eagerly maintaining this aggregate operator needs to repeatedly remove its prior output sum results, which increases CPU consumption. We find that shared query execution will push the whole plan to execute more eagerly to meet the lowest that has a goal, which offsets the benefit of reducing redundant work in the shared plan. Consider this example QA and QB. They have two similar join, join plans with only a predicate sigma b different. Note that for the shared plan, this predicate sigma b star does not discard tuples, but allocate tuples that belong to QB. It is the sigma filtering doing the actually actual filtering job for QB. If we execute the two queries separately, QA is executed lazily due to its high latency goal and QB does the opposite. If we share the two queries, we will execute the whole plan eagerly to meet the lower latency goal of QB. There are two cases, there are two cases of overhead. First, some sub plans have over, overly eager execution. For example, this uh, sub plan 2 of QA is executed more eagerly than it should be because QA has a high latency goal. This over execution, over eager execution, increases CPU consumption because this uh, aggregate operator needs to repeatedly remove its prior output tuples. The second overhead is that the shared subplan will be executed eagerly for larger combined, combined data. For example, if we execute the two queries separately, separately for this subplan, we execute the subplan of QA lazily for QB, although executed eagerly, we may only process a small amount of data due to the predicate of, Q, of QB. For the shared plan, we need to execute it eagerly for all the combined data of QA and QB and meet the lower latency goal of QB. The root for the two problems is that existing approaches do not consider the diverse latency goals and not exploit the time slackness across these latency goals. To exploit the, lat the time slackness, we break the shared plans, the shared plan into subplans as operators that have more than one parent operator. We propose two ideas to address the above 
the above problems. The first is to assign different saw plans, different execu execution frequencies or paces. The pace represents how many times we execute a saw plan or a plan where each execution has equal input data size. The second idea is to decide which queries should share the saw plan. Let's see how the queries are executed in a shared or unshared fashion. If we execute the two queries separately, we can execute different queries at different paces based on their respective latency, based on their respective latency goals. Here, QB has a pace three, which means each execution is started when one third of the total input data has arrived. And QA has a pace one, so it starts one execution when all data arrives. If we choose to share the two queries and execute the share plan in a single pace, we need to execute it, execute it eagerly to meet the latency goal of QB, which may have higher total work than the no share plan. Note that the latency of a query in a shared plan is a summation of the final execution time of all its sub plans. If we use non-uniform paces for this uh, shared plan, we can execute sub plan two lazily to reduce the CPU consumption. So the optimization problem here is to find a, sub, a query plan and its pace configuration to minimize the total work and meet the final work constraints of all queries. Here, the total work is the proxy for CPU consumption based on a cost model, and the and the final and the final work is the proxy for the query latency. We propose iShare to solve this problem. iShare takes a set of scheduled queries along with their final work constraints and input. It first uses an existing mod query optimizer to generate a share plan. Then it finds the long uniform paces for this share plan to reduce the total work. It additionally unshares some saw plans to further reduce the total work. The final work constraint, uh, the final work constraint is defined as the ratio between the desired final work users want to achieve and the final work of batch processing. For example, this final work constraint point three means users want to reduce its final work to 30% of the one of batch processing. Let's first look at how to find the long uniform paces. Here we use a metric called incrementability, which quantifies how best the incremental execution can reduce the query's final work. Then we have a fast algorithm for computing this metric and adopt an optimization algorithm from our prior work to find the long uniform paces. Incrementability is defined on two pace configurations. Each pace configuration includes the paces of all sub plans. Here, PE is more eager than PL, which means for every pace in PE, it should be no smaller than the corresponding pace in PA. And there is at least one pace in PE that is larger than, than, than the corresponding pace in PL. Incrementability is defined as the ratio and between the benefit of the reduced final work and the overhead of the increased total work. It represents the amount of final work reduced per unit of additional total work we have invested. For example, to compute the incrementability of the two pace configurations, we first compute the decreased final work for the two uh, for all queries. Here we use CF to represent the final work of a query given a pace configuration. We then, uh, we then compute the overhead of increased total work. The problem of this definition is that it does not consider when a query's final work con constraint is already met. For example, increasing pace one does not benefit QA if the final work of QA is already lower than the constraint. Therefore, in our definition, we instead use the benefit of net decreased final work with respect to the constraint. Specifically, we first bound the final work we decrease from to be no smaller than the final work constraint. Then we compute the net benefit of reducing the final work. 
We use the algorithm from our prior work to find the pace configuration. It starts with all paces set to one, which is the case of batch processing. Then it checks whether this optimization should finish. If not, it considers increasing one pace of one sub plan by one. We repeat this process. We repeat this process until this optimization finishes. Now we can decide the long uniform paces. The next optimization is to choose which sub plans to share or not. Given a shared sub plan, we consider splitting the, the queries sharing the sub plan into multiple groups. For example, the sub plan is shared by the sub plan one is shared by three queries. We first find the split that decomposes the sub plan into two and then generate the new plan. In this talk, I will focus on the first step, find, uh, finding a split to reduce the total work. Please find the details of the second step in the paper. We find that the approach of enumerating all possible splits, finding the corresponding paces, and comparing their uh, total work is time consuming. To find a split that can reduce the total work without introducing high optimization cost, we define a local optimization problem. For each shared sub plan, it has estimated input and cardinality given the pace configuration we find in the last step. Our local optimization problem asks, can a speed of this subplan reduce the work of processing its input data? We similarly define the local total work, local final work, and local final work constraints. The local total work is a summation of split partitions processing all input data. Consider the split with two partitions, subplan 1A and subplan 1B. The work of a partition depends on its pace. Here, a pace 5 means that we divide the input data evenly into five batches and process each uh, incrementally. The work of the partition includes the five incremental executions. The local, the local final work of a query is the work of the query's partition's final execution. We adapt the query's final, uh, final work constraint to generate the local final work constraint. With this definition, we now ask how to find the split and the pace configuration to minimize the local total work while meeting all final work constraints. Even though we have simplified our problem to only consider this local subplan, this problem is non-trivial because we not only need to find the pace configuration, but also consider the exponential number of possible splits. Our key observation is that there is a monotonicity of the optimal pace for a partition. Recall that the work of a partition depends on its pace. Therefore, for each partition, the optimal pace is defined as the smallest pace or the laziest one that makes the partition meet all its queries local file work constraints. If we consider merging the two partitions, partition A and B in this case to the new partition C, the partition C should be executed no lazier than partition A and B because it needs to do the combined work and meets the lowest constraint. Therefore, the key observation is that the optimal pace of a partition is monotonically increasing as it involves more queries. This inspires us to build the split from bottom to top and monotonically find the optimal paces as well merging partitions. We design a clustering algorithm. The, the initial split is that each partition includes only a single query and the pace is set to one. Then we increase the pace of each partition to find the optimal pace that meets the local firewall constraints. After we consider merging a pair of partitions that reduces the most local total work, we iterate all split candidates and choose the one that reduces the most local total work. Note that based on the monotonicity, when we search the optimal pace for newly merged partition, the search starts from the larger pace of the original pair of partitions. In this example, the search starts at four. Now we have a new split and we repeat this process until we find that merging partitions cannot further reduce the local total work. 
We implement iShare in Spark SQL and use Kafka as the data source. We use the state-of-art MQL optimizer to generate the share plan. We use three baselines. No share uniform does not share uh, queries and uses a single page for each single query. No share long uniform is adapted from our prior work in QP. It breaks a single plan into subplans at the blocking operators and assigns different subplans different frequencies. Finally, share uniform uses single page for a share plan. We use all 22 dipset queries with a scale factor 5 and simulate a loading process of 100 megabytes per minute and set the max pace to 100. We report two metrics, the total execution time, which is the number of CPU seconds used in finishing all queries, and the missed latencies. First, we define the latency of a query and the summation of the final execution time of all subplans involved in this uh, query. We compute the latency goal by multiplying the relative final work constraint, the ratio, by the latency of executing a single query in one batch. We report two missed latencies. The absolute missed latency represents the difference between the tested latency and the latency goal. And the relative missed latency is the ratio between the absolute one and the latency goal. All experiments use 20 cores and 192 gigabytes memory. Before we compare iShare with the baselines, let's first look at the total execution time of executing the share plan in one batch and executing the tested queries separately in one batch. We see that in this case, the share plan has the benefit of reducing the redundant work across queries. However, if we consider the uh, diverse constraints, the share plan is not efficient anymore. Here we test five random, random final work constraint configurations. And for each configuration, we randomly pick one from four final work constraints for each query. We see that iShare has lower total execution time compared to all baselines. The share uniform has high varied, uh, low, uh, high varied total execution time because it needs to meet the lowest and has goal, which is randomized by our configuration. Next, we report the minimum, median, mean, and max missed latencies across all queries. The median and the minimum absolute or relative missed latencies are zero for all uh, approaches, so we do not report them here. Let's first look at the mean and the max missed latencies. We see that iShare has similar or smaller missed latencies compared to the baselines. Low share uniform and share uniform have high missed latency due to, uh, due to a long incremental query Q15. Q15 maintains, um, Q15 maintains a max aggregate operator over denates. If a max value is denoted, we need to rescan all data arrived so far to find the new max value, which can lead to high latency, high query latency. I share avoid this using long uniform paces and executing the subplan lazy. To summarize, we propose an optimization framework I share to reduce the CPU consumption with similar latency, uh, latency compared to existing approaches. Its key idea are to use different paces uh, for different subplans and decide which queries should share a subplan. Thanks.